Fox. Welcome to Education Matters. Today we have guests who went to camp this summer called Camp Constitution. And remember that show we had and talked all about, you know, the camp coming up in, in, uh, from July 13th to July 20th, and we said, well, you know, after that camp, we'd have the campers on. Well, here we are. Here's a show on the campers and how much fun they had and what they had to do at camp. And we also have uh, Mr. Sherleff, um, Hal Shurtleff, who was the director of the camp. Uh, he brought his children today. And so, them anyway. Hal, uh, could you introduce your children for us or they can introduce themselves? Well, I think they know their names by now. Um, Emily. Christine. My name's Christina. And Nathaniel. And Nathaniel. Well, I'm really happy you folks came today and that you were able to come and tell us all about your camp. And I do have a couple questions. Okay. And I'm sure the viewers have questions. And so, first of all, the main thing about camp is that did you have fun? Yes, we had a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> had a lot of fun at Camp Constitution. Because people would say, what do they do at Camp Constitution? Um, a lot of bunch of stuff, and it's <laughs> boring. And <laughs> no, did you make friends? That's probably the yes, second question. Yeah. Yes, Definitely. we made lots a lot of, of friends. friends. Right, and, and how many campers do you think there were this year? Uh, well, we had uh, 86 folks there the whole week, and we had probably another 20 or so that may have been there a day or two or came by for, for a day, half a day. So uh, it was a good turnout. That's great. So, and I understand from your Facebook page on Camp Constitution that you had games and you had the lake activities and did you have good food? Yes. yes. Yeah, very good. There's a really good chef there. Yeah. Really good, good cook? <laughs> yes. They yeah. have a new a new chef and yeah. he loves his job and he put on in yeah. We had some real treats, some real good uh, good food there. Yeah. Well, that's that's important. And it was at the Toa Nippy Christian Retreat Center in Ridge, New Hampshire. Ridge, New Hampshire, right. And then I heard, I saw on your Facebook page that you went on field trips. Yes. You had three field trips, I think it was, or yeah, three. Mm -hmm. at least anyway. Um, probably the main one or maybe they're all equal, but you went to Old Ironsides? Yep. In Boston? Yeah. Could you tell us about Old Ironsides? Anything sp special, particular that uh, you thought, you know, or why it's called Old Ironsides? Well, its sides are not made of iron. <laughs> uh, it's live oak, right? Mm -hmm. And when they would shoot at it, the cannonballs would just bounce right off because the live oak would be more resilient to the cannonballs. It would just kind of bounce right off. And they said, oh, her sides are made of iron. But they weren't really. They're they were not made of iron. Okay. So that, that'll correct me because <laughs> they were well, made the, of uh, iron. One of our instructors and counselors had been a crew member on Old Iron Sides. And on the bus ride down, he gave us a nice class on some yeah. of the facts of Old Ironsides. And nice. uh, Norman Trugenzo, who actually been a New Hampshire state rep for a term, wow. up, lives, lives up in the White Mountains. Yeah. Wow, so you must have had quite the history lesson then. Yes. So you know all about the USS Constitution. And then we went to Bunker Hill Monument too. Oh, and that's right. And I think all of them made it to the top of the monument, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Was that walking <laughs> up the stairs? Yes. Yes. Mm. I've never been. <laughs> Did you have a nice view at the top? Yeah, it was really yeah. nice. Yeah, it was pretty. Really pretty of Boston, huh? Really was, well, yeah. Yeah, you got a whole history lesson on Bunker Hill. Yes. Well, that's priceless. The, there was a um, a guy who was telling everyone about it, so. Well, that's great. We actually had an ancestor of ours that was at Bunker Hill. Yeah. A direct ancestor that fought at the at the uh, Bunker Hill. So well, that's nice. a little more significance to the shirt list than right, maybe to right. some others. But a little genealogy there, that's right? That's right. That's right. Well, then um, then you went up Mount Monadnock? Yeah, he did. Oh, <laughs> he did. Okay. <laughs> and how was that? It was pretty fun. I liked it a lot, but it was pouring rain on the way back. On the way down, yeah. That was... Slippery on the rocks. Um... Not too, no one really got too injured. A little scratch here and there, but it was, uh, I've actually liked it. It was more fun when it was raining. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. I've only done that trip once. And Monadnock is to supposed top. to be the second most hiked mountain in the world. Yeah. yeah. Not just, not just yeah. New, New England, but the world. And we, and it's an, this is an optional field trip. Uh, we don't expect everybody to go. No. It's a little bit grueling for some. But I guess about half, half the camp yeah, and uh, most of the, a good percentage of the campers went out. And uh, we like to we see our goal is to get them tired so they sleep at night. <laughs> Unfortunately, we get tired too. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then you went to Uncle Sam's cabin. Yeah, yeah um, that was a lot of fun. 
That was a lot of fun. There was so many posters of Uncle Sam and pretty much anything you can imagine. Uncle Sam, it was there. And um, Samuel Wilson was an actual person. <laughs> Most people don't know. So. Uh -huh. Well, it's the boy at home of Uncle Sam Wilson and the f man who, well, he, the couple that own it, uh, they actually live in Sonoma, California. And over the years, we've become very good friends. And he came out just to open it for us. Mm. You know, nice. No charge. Uh, and... Uh, uh, we had a nice little tour. I think he gave everybody a book that he that he ma made available on the life of Uncle Sam. And he signed it too. And he signed it and had some treats for us. So uh, it was a great. And it's in Mason, New Hampshire. Wow. And he comes back out uh, Uncle Sam's birthday. I, I think it's September 14th. And he'll open, have an open house. So if you're listening and like to visit this remarkable little house, it's not a, actually a cabin. It's a colonial style home built in. Mm -hmm. I think it was built in 1770. No, 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 we earlier than that. Yeah, early 1700s, anyway. Wow. Now, on the inside, was it decorated as it was in the 1700s? Or um, the furniture? and The furniture, but there was um, pretty much filled with posters. And well, the house was actually was a private residence up until, um, what, the when Jean-Pierre Moreau, the, the owner, bought it. And so uh, he did restore it, so there's some period pieces, but for the most part you have a lot of uh, Uncle Sam memorabilia. The kitchen, which is a m sort of a modern kitchen, uh, has uh, all kinds of, un everything Uncle Sam, everything even Uncle Sam wine that he actually makes, mm -hmm. and uh, light switches Uncle Sam. Uh, and on the upstairs he has a lot of um, pictures, original uh, pictures from the, the illustrated magazines of the 1880s and 1890s with Uncle mm -hmm. Sam featured mm -hmm. in there. Uh, was that the one that wore the stilts on the, no. high, on the parades? Well, you see, well, see, Uncle Sam Wilson, he was uh, boy, born in Arlington, Massachusetts. He was actually a courier for Paul Revere. He was about a 9 to 10-year-old boy. And his father was one of the um, guys that dumped tea into the harbor. Oh. So they're a very patriotic family to begin with. And they moved to Mason about 1776 or 77. And he was he was, grew up there. And when he was in his late teens uh, or early twenties, he and his brother moved out to Troy, New York, and they became very successful business. They were brickmakers, and they got in the meatpacking business. And they, the term uncle was an affectionate term. He was just highly regarded mm -hmm. by the neighbors and and, he, and his employees. He was a very benevolent boss, mm -hmm. a good Christian man. And one of the men that worked for his meatpacking plant was. Uh, leading a tour of uh, inspection tour of the governor of New York and a few others and there was a, a crate of meat or a barrel of meat with the initial US and those days the United States was not known as US and he said oh and he said w what's this US and he said oh that's Uncle Sam oh. and that's how it stuck and oh. uh, so he and he didn't dress in those days he didn't he would come out to parades but he wasn't dressed up in the that was later on with Thomas Nast, the, the illustrator, back okay. where the word nasty comes from. And this is what you learn when you go to the Uncle Sam house. Yeah, you I get think a great I have lesson. too many questions. You get I a think great I lesson on Uncle Sam. <laughs> 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 you gotta go to camp and learn all this stuff. Yeah. Exactly, and, and you know, we're very lacking in our history, you think? You think in school yeah. you'll probably know more than the teacher knows, perhaps, huh? Yeah. After being <laughs> in camp in your history class. Well, we homeschool, so. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. So they probably don't know as much okay. as I do at this well, point, but they may hopefully, although when it comes to firearms, this guy <laughs> knows more than most yeah. most people should know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. <laughs> so then, um, so what was the most fun, like, you had at camp? Like, the, uh, you had campfires, you had games, you had, what was the most fun, Emily? What do you think? The lake. You loved the lake? It was a beautiful lake? First time I ever went swimming in it. Is that right? Yeah. You've never been in a lake before? I've been in a lake before, it's not that particular lake. Right, right. Was it cold? <laughs> Meh. Not too bad? Did you go swim every day? I try to. Yeah? That's good. Um, most fun you I had. pretty much liked everything, but um, I liked the campfire the best. That was a fun time? Yeah, that was a really fun time. Yeah, all those camp songs yeah. and everybody together. We did skits and... Like a lot of like musical instruments, people play. We had a lot of talented uh, people at our camp. Uh huh. That's great. It was the most fun you had. I really did like everything. I like the classes. I like the field. I like the field trips. I like the campfire. I like the lake. 
like the, all the recreation and the games and the tournaments and everything. Yeah, you did about everything you could yeah. possibly do. Yeah, that was a lot I, of fun. I, I saw some pictures. Well, well that's you. how you enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, if you know, for people who and these they they grew up with the camp program, but you get some folks who've been there for the first time. They don't know anybody, and you know, participate, and that's how you have fun. And mm -hmm. before you know it, you've made friends within a, within a day. You're bonding with these people, mm -hmm. uh, people that you meet, and you have a lot in common. And they, 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 a lot of them, especially the young ladies, cry the last day at camp. They don't want to. A make, lot of people. They want cry. to keep going. Is that right? Somebody, yeah. So many yeah. people have requested two weeks of yeah, camp. Yeah. Well, we added a day to it. That's about as much as we're going to do in the, in the foreseeable future. Wow. Uh -huh. So it's a week and a day. So you really yeah. made some nice bonds there. Yeah. yeah. Well, now you can email each other or yeah Facebook well we do get together all, all over the yeah. course of the year we might get together and yeah. uh, i think emily might be meeting one of the see one of the friends she made uh in the Two new york them. area uh, albany area next couple of days so oh, wow yeah so then of course you had to get into the study a little bit of like the constitution yeah like what the amendments or the Declaration of Independence, and I, I saw pictures. Well, with em see, we have what they call Patriot Camp for Emily's age, between, say, 5 and 10 or 11, and that's a special program. It, actually, Patriot Camp is something that was created by two ladies, almost like a uh, vacation Bible, the way that's run, mm -hmm. and they have uh, they learn about various patriotic hist historical characters. They'll dress up in, uh, in character, and they have a little parade. They did the flag raising, nice. and uh, so they had a lot of fun. It's not as structured that the other classes but mm -hmm. they have more a little more recreational time which you expect you don't expect five-year-olds to have five classes a day or whatever right, right. Um, but then um, uh, and we also have an intermediate class and advanced class so we take a, a quiz before the, f the first day of camp to see where that in some cases you have an 11 year older whose parents might be living and breathing this stuff they're doing better than some of the older ones the who may be uh, yeah. maybe the they that's not uh, and we had a young boy that there for the first time eight year old boy who was known as Kit Constitution and he rattles off the by memory the Bill of Rights and many other parts of the Constitution so to challenge uh, and he had a great time but to challenge older people too. Oh, nice. not just you can memorize things but know what they mean mm. you know and the significance mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. these things so and we were very fortunate we had oh, I should say blessed we had some great instructors Chris Ann Hall now I have not met at the time prior to her coming to camp I, I was, she was recommended to me by three people and that's usually enough to say let's look into it and she has a full-time ministry she travels around the country giving talks to groups so I kind of we booked her last you know almost a year almost a year in advance mm -hmm. and she brought her son eight-year-old boy uh, and and we said look he's let him be part of the program and she really motivated this lady Chris Ann Hall is right in her early 40s mid 40s mm -hmm. just a very dynamic speaker and uh, just motivated the, uh, the expert on the Constitution she's my favorite sorry she's my favorite speaker was she your favorite yeah I think yeah. That a lot of people are. so and if you're uh, watching the show look her up Chris com. I think you'd be really impressed and she said that she's been in New Hampshire before as an attorney for a client. She's other than that, and never so she really enjoyed. Uh, she didn't mm -hmm. spend the whole week, but hopefully next year we'll get her for the whole the whole week. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. she brought a lot of information. Yeah, she had. Did um, she do classes? And yeah, classes, and she sold books, and mm -hmm. yeah, well, great. And um, so these campfire songs, did you learn any like by heart? Did did, did you do you know any that? You know what I'm getting at, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know any that you could sing, like one or something for us? No? Uh, I know one. Do you know one? Did you know by heart? Yeah, but... Um, you want to just try it? Maybe. Do they know? Does your bigger brother and sister know it, too? Want to sing like one what? verse? Sing one. Do you know it? What is it? Baby face? Oh. Baby face, huh? That's your favorite? <laughs> well, there's so many songs. There's well, we have a camp song book, and yeah. we have some, we'll have some old hymns. And some uh, campfire type songs, uh, mm -hmm. the, the bear. Right? What was that one? The bear. Oh, it's like. Um, yeah, the other day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. and then we, you know, people we recite poetry. It's uh, a lot of fun. And, uh, a lot of things like that, and skits. So sometimes we gotta get some new skits. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yeah. they, a lot of people are they're new to them. But I see the same. Mm -hmm. There's they, the some readers. We get some know, new ones, I think this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, a couple so. new ones. But it's about having and wholesome fun too, and. We, we do something that's quite revolutionary. We take their cell phones away. 
Mm -hmm. No, they can call their parents. They can have access if they need to. But they're not texting all, you know, in the afternoon, no. text, text, you know, texting each other. They're talking to each other. Right. And they seem to survive without the cell phones, the without week. the texting. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, and, and it's kind of refreshing to see that you don't have just these zombies walking around, you know, texting all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and it wasn't too bad, right? Without your cell phone, you survived. Yeah. You didn't even miss it, did you? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, if your parents are there, you don't have to worry about calling your parents because you see them, right? Yeah, right. And I would say, I would say half the people came with families. Mm -hmm. So we, have, and we had a good percentage that weren't. And this year we had um, about 50 to 60 percent new campers, too, which is always nice. You always nice. want to have new, new people coming in. Yeah. And uh, we hope next year's camp will be, uh, we'd like to fill it make two or three months in advance, in other words, okay, we're filled up, we have no more room. Uh, we came a little bit close to that. Oh, uh, good. Yeah, uh, Otoa Nippi can accommodate a lot of people, but if you have a room with a family of three or four and or eight beds, you know, you, there's four beds that you don't have, mm -hmm. but um, but it's a great it's a great location. Mm -hmm. And we had a couple um, uh, uh, from New York City, Manhattan, a mother and daughter team, and uh, they're at night, they're looking up at the sky. Wow, stars! We never see these things, and, and they were totally uh, wow. fascinated by the, you know, the, the beauty of the, the area. So, oh, when nice you live experience. you live in the area, I mean, yeah, it's beautiful, but it's but you live in New York City or even Boston, you don't see that, would right, you? Right, right. Yeah. Wow. Well then, um, so you went through the amendments, so you know all those, right? So you know all your freedoms, and how much freedom have we lost in America? Do you think? When you, when you look around, I mean, you, you know, I mean, you're young and you probably don't understand, you know, a lot of things about a lot of things, but you probably, maybe you know, maybe you have some ideas about how much different it is today than it was maybe when the Constitution was adopted. Yeah. Do you have any ideas about what that means? or? Well, we did. We've lost a significant amount of our freedoms. Mm. In your opinion? In my opinion. From what In you In my study, research, yes. From what you see around you? Well, it's interesting, you know, a person who was born blind has no concept of vision. But a person who loses their sight has appreciates, you know, the vision. And I think that uh, if you've grown up in a culture where certain things are accepted, then they don't know what they're missing. And uh, I remember back in the mid-90s, I was interviewed by a Boston Globe reporter. And I told her in 1980, I got out of the Army, and I went down to the police station and got my FID card, firearms ID card. It took about a day to get it. I walked into downtown Boston, the, the, the Woolworths, the 5 and 10, and I bought a 22 Rugers and about 1,000 rounds of ammunition. And I said, I didn't walk around with it, you know, loaded. I just put it in a bag, and I went home on the subway. And she didn't believe me. Is that right? Today, that would be unthinkable, you see. So. Uh, well, the the Woolworths was like today's Walmart. That, that's like right. Everything and anything you can yeah. find in there. Yeah, and uh, so when they come up to New Hampshire and they can go into the local store and see a you know, huge gun selection, which you don't see in Boston. So right. they have an appreciation of the freedoms they lost. And uh, some of them, now they're not working. Well, Nathaniel's working. He's got a job uh, at a supermarket. But when they look at their pay stub and they see, what's all this taxes about? See, then they appreciate, you know, things that, oh, well, what are we paying for? What's all this about? So, mm. although we tell the campers that we have more freedoms, even with all the problems we have, we live in the best country in the history of the world, mm -hmm. and we back that up. We don't just say it's our opinion. We back it up with, uh, with, with information on that. On that. Mm -hmm. And our goal is not just to teach a bunch of facts, which is important, but to defend those facts, right, to why, why are certain things right and wrong. And uh, that's something we're going to be doing a lot more. And then we're going to be able to uh, focus on debating skills, defending mm -hmm. that to people who don't believe these things. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the important thing because uh, most young people, if they survive high school and they go off to a college, especially if it's secular, mm -hmm. they're going to be under attack right. constantly. And many of them will yield to that because it's a lot easier just to give in. And uh, so we haven't seen a whole lot of evidence of that with our campers that have come through. And some of the, some of the campers, are junior counselors, I know, in college, mm -hmm. and they're sticking to their guns because you know, they believe they're right. Right is right, and they don't. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you gain respect. 
instead of just sort of catering to the crowd. So as homeschoolers, and we have a lot of homeschoolers, they may not be around that environment. You know, I mean, not that they say they're isolated, but they're not in the public school realm. Where they have to defend their freedom. All the time. Their so First Amendment rights, their Second Amendment rights. That, that's correct. So, right. uh, so that's what we're going to be fo focusing more on now, too. And that their job is to be part of the freedom movement. They're the folks that are going to be doing cable TV right. shows like yours down the road. Right. They'll be running the camp program. They'll be running for political office. They'll be the CEOs of companies or the parents <laughs> and mothers and, and fathers of young children who need to be raised in this, uh, mm -hmm. the pass the baton. So, that's, so it's not just as the fun and the games. It's, this is great. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, and we enjoy We have to have that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the purpose of the camp, other than having a lot of fun, is to the present generation make them more effective and we have a lot of adults come there and they're I mean I get something out of it every year mm -hmm. if I don't then I'm, I'm not paying attention mm -hmm. so I learn and then uh, to make us more effective as freedom activists and then the next generation mm -hmm. and on the last full day of camp we take out some of the not everybody we take out usually the advanced campers and distribute constitutions to the, some of the local neighbors and businesses we go to usually Jaffrey it's mm -hmm. the and I say you know these young people you I don't know too many young people that are actually going out in the public mm -hmm. and passing out constitutions and all their issue rate of things. In fact, one year we passed out, uh, last year we passed out this little thing on Agenda 21. We actually published this little thing called The Real Facts, printed by a public, uh, written by a local man, Tim Carter. And I said, this is the power, the freedoms that we have to do this and the power that you folks have, you don't realize it. Right, it can't be done in other countries. That's right. Mm -hmm. And most young people, if they are coming to your door, they're getting signatures for Greenpeace or, you mm -hmm. know, because they're getting paid to do that. I said, not too often that the young people are out there promoting freedom right. and liberty. And they will be the ones to carry this torch. Exactly. We yeah. are all responsible for carrying the torch of freedom. That's and, right. Um, so and God, God gave us uh, two hands and a mouth and he gave mm -hmm. us feet, and we better use these things to promote freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. So. And then one of the last things is the camp newspaper called the Constitution Journal. And Emily told me that you made something for the paper. Yeah, I made a few things. You did a few things. You drew pictures, or? Yeah, I drew, I, I drew a lot of them. They're pastel, though. So you can and what was the picture about? Um, um, I drew the, um, like the lake. Because mm. that's your favorite. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, the camp paper, we have the daily room inspections. And uh, the room inspections, we uh, have a contest at the end of the week, uh, free pizza, you know, the last full, full day. And, um, but we expect cleanliness, but we also want to have a Christian and patriotic theme. And everything, I mean, almost everything has to be handmade. We don't want a bunch mm. of people bringing, you know, mm. to go to I party or, or mm. you know, party central and all kinds of pictures of George Washington. Mm -hmm. And these young people are quite creative. The things they do, so it's a lot of fun. And on our web, on our Facebook page, by the way, we have two Facebook pages, uh, and I think we uploaded most of the pictures. Of it was 700 and oh, something we pictures. Get, we get more. There. Well, we have a lot of people with cameras, and uh, <laughs> we have people like adults that like to take pictures. So we, we want to document the camp, that yeah. we actually had something. <laughs> we did. And we have a YouTube channel mm. where they can find a lot of the classes, and we're still working on. We're oh, actually okay. going to be having a, one of our young campers uh, works for a cable station in Massachusetts, and he is going to be doing sort of a, 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 like a half-hour, 20-minute uh, promotional mm -hmm. DVD that we can hand out to people and so forth. And it'll be up on YouTube. But a lot of the classes, not all of them, but most of them. A few of them didn't come out quite right, but most of them look pretty out there. So you see what Good. we're learning and some of the recreational things, the tug of war and the yeah. volleyball tournaments and yeah. the field trips, uh, some yeah. of that will be up there. That sounds like well. a packed full weekend. Uh, not a weekend, a full it week. It goes by awfully quick. It goes by awfully quick from the, wow. uh, you know, from the morning uh, optional run and yeah. swim, the polar bear swim, yeah. to a campfire at night. It's, uh, Fun it goes by quick, yeah. yeah. Well then, um, I guess we're coming to the end of the show soon. Do you have any last thoughts you want to tell the people at home and say, you know, look about, into the camera, the camp, that one of those that camera there, number three. Come to camp. Come to camp. Come to camp. Okay. Yes, <laughs> it's so much fun, and you make a lot of new friends and learn a lot of other, a lot of different like stuff to do. Mm hmm Well worth it. Well worth it. Okay, Emily, why should people come to camp? It's really fun, and you get to meet new people, and you get to learn new things. Mm hmm Great, and you'd be out in the fresh air, and 
have yeah. fun. Tonepe is such a like quiet place. It's so nice. It's very peaceful and beautiful. Mm. The campground, which is something we don't have always. Mm. The peace and quiet, and, you, mm. and the crickets. Yes. The frogs. The frogs. frogs. I love yeah. the frogs. Lots I caught frogs, so many right. frogs. Wow. And uh, the, we have a website, campconstitution.net, and on that website you can see the links to the YouTube channel and the Facebook mm -hmm. page and all the other good things we have available. Okay. And we haven't announced next year's camp. We're just hoping to get the date, and it should be July 11th, 11th to the 18th, I think, is the, what we're looking for. So okay. it, will be in the, it will be after the July 4th holiday. So like anyway. the second week of... July. Something like that. So we'll Somewhere we'll announce that. that. I'm hoping any any time now. Okay. There was, there was a little uh, the group, the, the folks that run the camp. They uh, they uh, they have the option of their group, so they're not okay. decided yet. So. Uh, so you want to give the folks your phone number if they want to call you? Sure. Yeah. My phone number is eight five seven, four nine eight, one three zero nine, and they can call me and ask me anything and. Uh, the thing we've also published some things. You can uh, some okay. of the things so that we published. Camp Constitution on the on the website. Dot net. Camp Constitution. Dot net. net. Yeah. And uh, so all the information's there on Facebook. All the pictures of the kids are there. <laughs> it's just amazing. And so, folks, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs>